Uh, what, what do you think about this whole situation? Well, uh, where do I start? Um, <laughs> basically, look, man, Lizzo is not my cup of tea. Um, you know, I don't listen to her music. I do not find Lizzo to be um, an attractive woman, in my opinion. That is not to say that she is not an attractive woman to other men, you know, on Earth, but she is just not attractive to me. Now, I believe that if because Lizzo is an entertainer and if what she does is positive and has, you know, a good impact on her listeners and her fans, then, you know, so be it. And the thing is, she is working for her. I'm pretty sure if I Googled, you know, her net worth. She's probably, you know, worth millions of dollars, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's that's it. Now, granted, Lizzo is not on my mind. And if I were a public figure, I probably wouldn't talk about her as much, given, you know, the intro to my statement, which is that I don't find her attractive. So the thing is, what does it really matter to me what this woman looks like if I have, you know, no interest in her, you know, whatsoever? Uh, Ari Spears, he's a comedian and he's entitled to his opinion. Now, I'm not going to be a hypocrite because, you know, I criticize Chris Rock for, you know, making fun of Jada Pinkett Smith. So I will be wrong as to try to condone what he said. But like I said, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Now, there's something that Dr. Boyce Watkins said on Twitter earlier today that I saw and I actually agree with it. And this is what he said. He said Lizzo's issue isn't the fact that she's overweight. Most Americans are. The issue is that she uses her obesity as a prop, which unfortunately undermines the ability to appreciate her talent. Black women don't deserve to be made into cartoon characters. It's racist. Now, I'm not so sure about that last sentence, but what I will say is that um, when people talk about body positivity and all of that, which apparently refers to the assertion that all people deserve to have a positive body image, regardless of how society and popular culture view ideal shape, size and appearance. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that, um, you know, people should feel ashamed about the way that they look. Um, if you decide to just be a certain way, then be a certain way. If that's what makes you happy, then cool. But we all know that, you know, what comes with obesity is a lot of, you know, like byproduct health conditions like diabetes and high blood pressure, you know, high cholesterol and so on and so forth. So it, it's it's almost a saying that by her kind of being that way, she's also advertising those sorts of health conditions, which, like I said, that's really up for debate. And one would really have to ask her how she feels about it. Um, But I believe that, you know she's not a bad person for being fat. Like that doesn't make her a bad person for being fat. I don't know if that's how people feel like Aries Spears is saying, but you know, so anyway, that's my two cents on that. Yeah. 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 And he, he said, you know what? Um, if, if people f take what he said, offensive, then they didn't listen to the message that he was trying to send. And it's not so much that he hates her. He says she, she's talented and whatever the case may be. But he said, if more of her friends really cared about her, you know, they tell her, you know what, you know, instead of eating that chocolate cake, let's go to the gym. You know, let's do some push-ups. Let's hit the treadmill and stuff like that. So, um, you know, uh, you know, this conversation is much more than just about Lizzo and, and, and Mary Spears. You know, the whole body positivity movement has caused a lot of uh, debate between people because a lot of people say that although it is great that the entertainment industry is starting to promote different bodies now, but a lot of the people coming out during this time too are glorifying obesity. Lizzo is just a prime example. But another um, example I'll give you too is the whole Piers Morgan uh, from Good Morning Britain. He's been known to uh, slam and criticize models for the, doing the same thing. So for example, he had a whole thing with Tess Holiday. I don't know if you know who Tess Holiday is, but she's a, she's a plus size model. And I, I use plus size because that's what she's advertised. But, you know, she's five, three, three hundred and something pounds. So what? I would Yeah. Tess Holiday. Oh, I don't know who that is. Let me Google her. Yeah. So she she's a very large woman. And uh, he had a guest on. Oh, on she Good Morning. Is, yeah, yeah, she's oh, big. She's a big girl. And, yeah. Damn. So. Ugh. Oh, oh I, I'm getting right into it. So. The whole the whole conversation with her happened was so he had a guest on on Good Morning Britain 
Angela Duplicia. She's 46, right? She's 5'4", 380 pounds, 64.6 BMI. But she got she gained a little fame for doing Miley Cyrus's music video, Mother's Daughter. And he was talking about how he feels like although he does appreciate that, you know, the body positivity is also not right that all these obese models are, you know, out here promoting obesity. And he used Tess Holiday because Tess Holiday has been on a couple of different uh, magazines, big magazines. The last one she did that I know uh, for certain was the Cosmo uh, magazine uh, cover. And one of the things that Tess Holiday uh, has become under attack for because many you fitness YouTubers have uh, talking about her was the fact that she's been known for her depression, talking about how she felt like she's going to die before her kids get older. Uh, the fact that she can't play with her kids often. Okay. Um, and, you know, and, it, it, and it's to the point where Piers Morgan, one of the things he said was that she has made a career of being fat. So when these magazines and these, these media companies come to her, she's only getting paid for her services, which is being fat. So if she ever lost that amount of weight, her clientele, her appeal might dip. So if if she ever decides to do a weight loss surgery, uh, go on a weight loss diet or a program, whatever the case may be, she may not make right. the same amount of money. But she's also been criticized too because she'll do workouts with celebrity trainers. And then the next week, you know, she's on Instagram shoving cake down her face with her fingers. Yeah. So, um, you know, let, let, let me ask you, um, and there's many more uh, examples I'm going to get into, but how do you feel about the, the whole body diversity glorifying obesity? Because a lot of people think that Lizzo, Tess Holiday, and many other plus size models are promoting this type of behavior. Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, let me kind of backtrack to what you said a little bit earlier, which caught my attention was the fact that she says that she can't she's depressed or she experiences feelings of depression because she feels that she won't outlive her kids and that there are times where she's unable to keep up with her kids because of her current weight. My thing is this, you have, and when I mean you, obviously I'm talking about Tessa yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. women like her, you have the ability, especially because she's famous and you know, I'm pretty sure she has, she has the finances to get her health in order. You have the power and ability to turn your physical, you know, stature around. You know what I'm saying? And it's not that she has to turn into the skinniest person in the world, but she could clean it up. She can clean it up. You go to the gym, you get a celebrity trainer. You know what I'm saying? Like there's certain things that you can do to, 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 to help your situation. Right now, not everybody actually has that within themselves to do so, because like you said, you know, she'll go from doing workouts and then recording herself doing workouts. And the next day she's shoving cake down her down her freaking throat. So this is what I'm saying. Like, I don't have any sympathy for a woman like that when it's like you refuse to do anything about your situation. So it's like you're crying, you know, for sympathy when in reality, it's like if you have the means to do it, and you have the resources, do it by all means, do it now. To answer your question, when you said how I feel, I guess you said about the diversity in terms of, you know, body shapes and sizes amongst women. Yeah. Right. My thing is this. It's up for debate whether or not they are actually promoting, you know, negative and, you know, at times fatal health conditions by being fat. I, you know, they're not saying get diabetes and get heart disease and all this other types of stuff. I, I, I can't really make the accurately make that statement because I don't know what's without actually speaking to them. They represent a demographic of people. And if I'm not mistaken, if the statistics are right, and I'm probably going to have to search this up, but from my understanding is that you, the United States of America is the, like the capital of the world in terms of obesity. A am I not right? Oh, absolutely. So, and I'm pretty sure, oh my gosh, what's wrong with my computer? But I'm pretty sure that there's, you know, a greater, you know, a decent portion of society that looks like the Lizzo's of the world and the Tess Holidays and the Gabare Sidibes and, and so on and so forth. And I do believe that 
they should be represented, you know, um, because part of what makes these people feel bad is that every time they open up a magazine, every time they cut on the TV, every time they go to the movies and watch something, they do not see people that look like them. So essentially, Lizzo and Tess Holiday provide representation of that demographic of women and I guess men, too. Um, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? It, it, that's not I, I can't say that it's a bad thing because sometimes that's what people want. People want to, you know, c- turn on the TV and feel better about themselves because they're watching someone else who looks just like them. That's like black people. It's like every time you go see, you know, MCU movie, you don't see any black people. You're going to be like, damn, like, I, you know, I like these movies. But when am I going to see somebody like myself? That's how they feel. So on that aspect, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But it really boils down to this. If you have a problem with the way that you look, you have every opportunity to do something about it, especially when you are a Lizzo or a Tess Holiday. Lizzo doesn't give a damn. <laughs> she doesn't give a damn. She's like, I'm fat. She's going to have all the goddamn Big Macs in the world that she want. And then she don't care. I, at least I haven't heard about Lizzo feeling bad about you know the way that she looks. And she doesn't allow men like Ari Spears Make her feel bad about it. Now, my my thing is, well, just accept what may come, you know, with that. So if there's any portion of Lizzo psych that thinks, oh, well, you know what? Maybe I might not live that long or my life expectancy, you know, is, is going to be that much shorter because of the way that my body is currently. Well, then, like I said, that's your choice. Tess Holiday, she's probably never going to hear this. But if the off chance that you're listening to this, hey, like you have the means to hire a personal trainer to fix your diet, get your nutrition in order, and you could get in shape. It's not about, you don't have to lose freaking, you know, 250 pounds to get in shape, but it's like just, just, just making conscious choices every single day that has, that makes your health top priority. You know, I'm somebody that goes to the gym, you know, saying out of 365 days out of the year, I'm probably in the gym about 330, you know, saying 330 days. So my thing is, and it's a lifestyle. It's, it's, it's something that you want for yourself. It's the way that people brush their teeth every day. You go to the gym, you know? So, yeah. Uh, you know what? I, I, I'm, not, I'm not one to step on people's toes. I, I, I always say I think it's beauty in every different shapes and sizes. And that's why, for me, um, the whole, the glory days of Victoria's Secret, Secret Models and then, and that whole aspect of being a model, the days of having to be six foot two and 97 pounds, that, you know, it, that wasn't healthy. And, but I also think the whole movement nowadays, I think there needs to be some changes. Now, let, before I get into that, let me ask you, what do you think about the whole fat shaming thing? Do you think it's, do you think it's, um, do you think it's fat shaming to tell somebody they should, they should, you know, lose some weight or hit the treadmill, you know, go to the gym, go work out, lose a couple pounds? Um, you know, here's my thing with that, right? Because people, and it's not even really just limited to being fat. You know, there are people who are body shamed for being skinny. There are people who are body shamed for being too tall, for being too short, etc. My biggest thing on things like that is, all right, so let's say if I'm, all right, all right, so let's say on the off chance that I'm friends with someone who is obese or I work with someone who is, you know, obese. Unless they ask me for my opinion, I'm not, it's not my place to tell somebody what they need to be doing with their own body. It's their body. It's not, it's not my place. I feel like it it edges into that realm. It's like when you're giving your opinion, you know, unsolicited. You see what I'm saying? It, it, it's almost, it's almost in a situation like, yo, no one asked you for your opinion. If, if, a, if an obese person were to ask me like, how do you, how, what do you think about my body? I mean, really give me your honest opinion. And if they ask me, then I'll say, yeah, I think X, Y, and Z, but if they didn't ask me, it's not my place, especially if I don't even, if I'm not even shape either, this is the thing. Now, like I said, Aries Spears, Aries, Aries Spears, he seems like a cool guy. Like I, I watched his video talking about it and he did have some valid points, not necessarily about being fat, but the response and backlash he was getting that I, that I agreed with. Right. But if you're not somebody that's actually in shape, you shouldn't even really be talking because people who are actually in shape, if they do say something about someone else's body, usually it's something endearing. It's like, you know what I'm saying? They're offering help. They're offering some sort of insight and information. They're not 
they're not digging a ditch just to throw them in there. No, they'll they'll dig a ditch to plant a seed and then maybe that person will water it. So in that aspect, I don't agree with, you know, a fat person, you know, because I'm pretty sure Ari Spears can't, you know, spar 12 rounds, 12, you know, 12, three minute rounds. I'm pretty sure he can't do it. And I'm also sure he can't run. I bet you his mile will probably be like 15 minutes, you know, probably a 20 minute mile. Right. He's not he's not going to have, you know, a sub seven minute mile. Probably not even five or six or probably not even six. So this is what I'm saying. So if you're going to be somebody that is going to, you know, voice your criticisms about the way that somebody else's body looks, you better be in shape. That's all I'm going to say. You better have something to show for those sorts of criticisms, because I, I understand. I understand both sides in, in a sense, but I m- more so agree with, you know, the women's responses than what Ari Spears said in the first place. And I don't like it when. You know, people say things about someone else's body because especially it's like, you know, and this is this is the thing with human beings in general. If you call somebody ugly. You might tell them that it's a joke, but their body doesn't know that you're joking. So when you say something about someone, especially when it's something it, it's it's an attribute that they cannot change immediately, then you are causing someone to be in a low vibrational state as a result of something that you said. Now, me personally, I'm not that kind of guy. You know, I'm an advocate about leaving people the hell alone. Like, leave people alone. Like, how about that? It's like the world would be a better place if people just left each other alone or at least don't play with people that you don't know. You know what I'm saying? If, if it's something about, you know, a fat person's body, whatever, let their friends talk to them, you know, about that. But if you're not cool with them like that, just don't say nothing. So that's so that's my answer to that. It's just I think people should really just if you don't have nothing good to say, don't say it at all. Just keep your opinions to yourself. Stop playing with people. I, you know what? I completely agree. And I, I think the key part of what you're saying is if nobody's asking for your advice, don't give it give it to them unsolicited. However, I'll, I'll use a experience of my own. You know, when I was in college, my weight used to fluctuate all the time. I'd be two, 320 pounds, 300 pounds, 260, 240, 290. So, you know, whenever I, I got too out of shape, people would tell me, oh, you know, I, you're looking a little, you know, out of shape there, pal. You, you've been hitting the gym, you know. So I, I think at some point, if people care about you, I think they will, because at the end of the day, We've seen this time and time again with with celebrities and and just people in real life who has the experience. You know, my father passed away from a heart attack because he was an over, overweight, obese guy. He was a big you guy. Said your father? Yeah, my father passed oh. away from a heart attack. I didn't meet him, but I've I've seen pictures of him, and my mom told me the story. So you know, to, to, to for her to tell me the story, they sit on the couch. He's eating a beef patty with cheese with a with a Jamaican drink, and then, you know, he fall over from a heart attack and die right there in the living room. You know, when you hear stuff like that, you know, it, it. I think there is a price you're paying when you are carrying that type of weight. I noticed that when I was 320, I've, I felt it. I could feel that. I mean, walking up steps was challenging. I was breathing heavy. Wow. So I think at the end of the day, I, I think it's due to the fact that we live in a very sensitive culture now. But I think if you really know somebody and you care for them, I agree with Ari Spears. I feel like if her friends, instead of telling like, yo, yeah, you know, do your thing, Lizzo, you getting money. Money's not the it's not the end all be all of happiness. Chris Farley was a a successful actor, but he was a big dude. And, you know, there's plenty of other comedians, celebrity actors, and whatever the case may be, who made a career of being fat. And look what happened to them. None of not a lot of them are standing nowadays. Why? Because they had some type of health issue. And, you know, as much as people would like to say I'm happy in their body, even Tess Holiday admit that there's days where she wake up and feel like she's going to die before her before her kids grow up. So I I'm, think I'm I'm sorry, real quick. Like, this is what I'm saying. If this if 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 you if you're somebody out there. And you are pushing 300 pounds or weight that is is technically overweight based on your BMI. Do something about it don't just sit there and then and then think oh because body positivity so this is okay no if you're literally waking up having those thoughts it's going to happen it's going to happen if she's having those thoughts and i'm not wishing anything on nobody but thoughts like are a real thing like the mind is a very powerful thing when she's having these thoughts and refusing to do anything about it because i'm pretty sure she's she's you said she's five foot two five three 330 pounds whatever she is she having a hard time getting out of bed Oh, you know you're what I'm saying? Know. And, and and I feel sorry for that bed frame. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? That, that match got some dents up in it, some real dents. So what I'm saying, yo, you owe it to yourself to have to be as healthy as possible in the lifetime that you got. Don't just be sitting there, you know, wallowing in your unhealthiness. Like that, like honestly, something like that, I, I had to say, sorry to cut you off, but it just it just pissed me off to hear that. Because it's like you can do something about it. Like you see those transformation, you know, videos on Instagram. You have the guys that were pushing three something. And then what do they do? Every single day, they made the conscious choice to better themselves. Better yourself. If right. you if you don't care, then all right, cool, don't care. And then just just expect to live to, to get to maybe your late 50s, 60s, but you ain't making it past 70. My mentor is like past 70 years old. He goes to the gym three days a week. Water aerobics, weightlifting, all of that. And he's 70-something years old. So if you are in your 20s, 30s, and then you you this way, what's your excuse? What's, what is your excuse? I've seen someone, you know, go to a 24-hour fitness in a wheelchair. What is your excuse? That's all I'm saying. For the people, you know, who are out there that are looking like Tess Holiday, you know what I'm saying, or they don't feel good about themselves, do something about it. And, oh, and, and that was one of the criti criticisms um Peter Morgan was talking about well the, the the model I was talking about that appeared on the program Angela. Now, when 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 you're a mother, I I, I and you a model, I get it. You know, you got to make money. You know, that's that's your brand, right? But one of the things he was saying, like, you know, have you ever thought about going? You know, doing like a you know a weight loss program. You know, trying to you know get your followers and people who who may look like you who look up to you on this journey. Because we see it time and time again, a lot of these celebrities are coming out. Look at Will Smith during the pandemic. He released a whole YouTube series of him losing That's weight. Saving my life. Exactly. And look how many views and stuff, how many people he inspired to, you know, get up off the couch and stop eating potato chips during the pandemic, right? So he was like, yo, have you ever thought about doing that? You'll probably gain more followers and more support doing something like that than, you know, being in a pop star music video. And she was like, oh, you know, you, you don't know. What, what my life is like you know i have a lot of health problems but that's due to my age i'm 46 and who said that uh the, the model that was on the program and okay. she was like you know it's hard for me to lose weight you know i've tried and i've tried but it's hard for me to lose weight it's not hard okay <sighs> you have to accept we have, you have three body types you know well, human beings have three body types you have mesomorphs endomorphs and ectomorphs all right now endomorphs they have to just be more responsible about the things that they eat because they could just have one French fry and then they're going to put on like two pounds. You have to accept it. Right. It, it, ain't, it ain't as hard to commit yourself. It's, it's commitment. Like you make a commitment to yourself and then it'll work out. But you don't just sit there and say, oh, yeah, I, I tried to do something for a week, you know, two, two weeks. I didn't see any results. So then, oh, I'm going to just chalk it up to it being hard. Like, nah, any real fitness coach, anybody that be in the gym will tell you like, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Cause that sounds like, like the, like the, the testimony of a sprinter, not a marathon runner. You know what I'm saying? Like I know a guy who's a personal trainer and then the way that he used to look, used to be out of shape, overweight. And the way he looks now is completely different. People like that will tell you it don't happen overnight. It might take eight months. It might take a year, but you have to commit to yourself. Like oh. fall in love with the process, not the destination. And like you said, that, that's true. I'll give you, like I said, because I'm trying to use my personal example because, you know, I think it's easy for people to make excuses. You know, one of my old excuses when I was 320 pounds was, you know, my family genetics is bad. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got slow metabolisms in my family. That's Everybody's not a bad thing. Big. No, that, it's not. Let me say, yeah, yes. Yeah, that's not a bad thing but, at all. But, you know, and I get it because. My, a lot of my family are big people. I'm not denying that. But I think at the, also at the same time that, you know, no matter what your genetics are, some people have fast metabolisms. I know people from high school who still look the same, skinny, they eat McDonald's all day, and they just don't gain weight. Man, yeah, that's just they how they don't are. gain weight, but that still takes a toll on their bodies. That's what I'm saying. Like, you see, see, skinny people, they might not look the part, you know, when they eat unhealthy. But it's like, it might not show on the outside. Oh, but it's showing on the inside. That's a fact. That is a fact. When they go to get their blood levels checked out, their their, their blood pressure and all of that at the doctors, something's going to come up on them on them health checks. That is a fact. Oh, absolutely. So it's not, yeah, so it's not to say that people who are skinny are exempt, you know, from the you know ramifications of an unhealthy diet lifestyle. 
No, and I'm gonna get into the into the skinny part because that's another part I want to talk about. Oh, I can speak but, on that. I can I can tell the motherfuckers some you know about that. Uh, absolutely, we're gonna get to that. But the the reason why I mentioned my I, I like to I mentioned in my journey is because I want people to understand that you can make all the excuses in the world. And this uh, I do know people are do have a lot of health problems, so it's not easy for them to go. Um, I can't remember all of. The you know the types of uh, th thyroid problems and stuff like that. People have medical conditions. My mom suffers for it, so her weight fluctuates all the time. So I understand that there are people with medical conditions. That's not towards people like that. But for instance, an example I use: YouTuber Amberlynn Reed. She popular. She was for for a while. She was you know top fifteen YouTubers. And this girl's like five hundred pounds. When she first started YouTube, she's That's about two hundred. She's gained 400 pounds over the course of her YouTube channel. And the it's not uh, the the problem with her is not even so much that she is big, obese. Her problem is she'll start doing like these weight loss journeys and she'll do it for 2 days and then the next day <laughs> on for like the whole rest of the month she's she's showing herself you know her doctors or she'll do I'll give an example one video she will show that she's at the doctor's office. Doctor tell her, "Look, you know, you you have to lose at least 150 pounds. You you have to. There's just no ifs ands or what's about it. So right. she'll do it for two days, and then for the rest of the month on her YouTube channel, she's at buffets. She's shoving cheesecake down her face. Then later that day, she's getting three pints of ice cream and then eating Mad some uh, Burger King. So all discipline, you know, it, it's stuff like that. It." You know what I'm saying? I think at some point, I do agree with Aerie Spears in a sense, because I do think at some point you have to hold yourself accountable. Because like um, the, the guy you mentioned who who said this thing on Twitter, you know, Lizzo is talented, you know, but she gets talked about more about her weight than we do by her music. And so I think at some point when you're young, you're easy. It's easier to get away with it, but when you start creeping into your thirties, your forties, your fifties, uh, you know it, it's going to really hit you. And I've seen the, the side effects of people who think it's cool and and fine with it. You know, they, they end up suffering in pain. People don't know about it until you know the the last moments. So, um, you know, we, we, we're going to definitely get into the skinny side because I I definitely think there's also a flip side to that. I think. Uh, Body positivity is much more than just about obesity. It's also about, uh, like I said, being severely underweight. So uh, before I get to it, one of the things I mentioned before was the Victoria's Secret model. So when I was growing up, and even uh, as I started entering the entertainment industry, I did hear about the whole model thing because I wanted to be a model when I was in high school. And so I heard about how what the, the, the rituals that a lot of these models would do, especially the women. because Carve themselves. Yeah, because of the, the 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 standards that they were set. So, you know, a lot of uh, back then, and even still to this day, you know, the Heidi Klums, the the Victoria Beckhams, uh, even a lot of the famous supermodels now, you'll see the same trend with them. But yeah, so you know, there's also a flip side, a flip side to the whole body positivity movement. You know, we talked about the obesity side, but we also haven't talked about the the, the standard of beauty that uh, the entertainment industry. Uh, that society has put on women, especially. So, you know, from reality TV shows to Hollywood, you know, we've seen uh, the, the 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 perfect stereotype what women should should want to be, should study to be, and we see it especially with models. You know, when I was growing up and as I started get, getting into, into the entertainment industry, I've seen the effects that you know the 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 lengths that women will go to try to maintain a certain figure to to fit in that dress for the for that runway show or for that character on a tv show so um what do you think about the flip side of this situation you know uh the the, the unhealthy beauty standards that you have to be tall skinny uh to be beautiful so my response to that is that's actually not the standard anymore and i'm answering it from the aspect of a guy who again i i have varying tastes in women i guess just in terms of like you know their body shapes now, I will refer to somebody like Kendall Jenner, who is, you know, tall, you know, and on the thin side. Right. But it's not like she's just the standard of my taste in women anyway. Or I just like all, you know, the tall, skinny chicks and the, and the women that you tend to see on these, you know, the front of these magazine covers and so on and so forth. In this era now, times have changed and 
most guys is I I feel like most guys we like all types of girls just as long as they're not like unhealthy. If you get what I'm saying. Oh, absolutely. And uh, let me say, let me say this. I think um the beauty standards definitely have changed. I've seen a lot especially with commercials and TV shows you see more uh you know diversity in bodies i'm seeing a lot more fitness commercials there's a point in time to be in a fitness commercial uh man or woman you have to be ripped six pack washboard abs the bleach showing you know what i'm saying everything had to be tightened in order and now you're seeing more diversity in bodies you're seeing more uh people with you know what you know with a little body there's nothing wrong with a little with a little cellulite a little you know stomach i think it looks great I, th you know, me personally, but there's also the, the, the still that standard, you know, when you look at a lot of these reality shows, the reality of it is no pun intended, but the reality of it is that unless you are walking up on those shows and you're not fit into that, that category, you're not getting cast in the love island. You're not going on the bachelor. You're not going on, uh, the housewives of Atlanta. You know, the beauty standards for those shows are still the same, you know, for a guy, you better come in chiseled jaw tight chest washboard abs nice legs and then for women especially nice glutes nice legs toned uh stomach you know nice perky breasts you know that's still the standard so you know the reality of it is i would like to see a little more inclusion and in, in diversity and that aspect but i th i still think although but you said you wait you you said you wanted more inclusion and diversity in terms of what and, and and like reality shows and other forms of media entertainment. So you're saying that so you're saying that you want to see more Lizzo's and Tess Holidays on reality TV? No, no, you can have different body positivity. Well, for me, when I say body positivity, I don't mean you always got to get this the dude with the six pack. I think when you have eight guys, you can have the Eric the average dude that maybe goes to the gym twice a week, but you know he still enjoys you know his time you know what i'm saying most of those people that go on the shows you can tell in the gym five six seven days a week they diet they train every day you know what i'm saying they have a regimen and the reality of it is not everybody's built like that you know so i think for me you gotta have a guy who don't have a six-pack on there a guy who maybe he's a somewhat decent shape but he don't look like he's gonna fight fight floyd mayweather tomorrow you know what i'm saying that's what i mean body positivity not everybody has to walk around looking like uh the next uh david beckham you know what i'm saying you can have an uh, adam sandler on those shows you know what i'm saying oh you mean so guys who are like the dad by kind of kind of guys yeah like not for me when i think about body positivity i think for women it, you don't have to be six foot three you know, 97 pounds. You can be five foot 10 and, you know, 170 pounds. You could be five foot four, 150 pounds. That's diversity. For a guy, you could be six foot three, you know, 220 pounds. You don't have to be, you know, a David Beckham when you show up on set with your well, shirt I just off Google David Beckham and he, I, I don't even look at this guy as like in shape. <laughs> to me, I don't know. Like, oh, no, I, he, like not to me. I, for Hollywood standards, for the entertainment standards, that that David Beckham has been on so many cover shows. He's known for being like one of the most handsome men on earth to a lot of people. That's what I mean. Like when you look at a lot of these reality TV shows, have you check out Love Island, check out The Bachelor, check out a lot of these shows that deal with like relationships, love, mm -hmm. being in tropical island. They cast some women and, and dudes that walk practically walk around the entire episode shirtless. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I think and that w when it comes to these type of sectors of entertainment and even the tv shows they could you know stand to have a little more diversity in body size because the reality of it is most people aren't blessed with six-pack genetics you know i have a brother who's yeah. naturally just ripped and lean that she, he's always been like that and he you know well, he smokes. all right well, well here's the thing so that's just that's just genetics right that he can just like like oc for instance oc is like that he's a guy that just walks around and then he just looks lean all the time Right. You know what I'm saying, but then other guys, you have to start cutting to be able to get that because everybody's got everybody every. Uh, let's say for men, every man has got a six pack, but you have to be able to unlock. You know, what I'm saying the 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 you have to unlock it. You have to get your nutrition in order. You got to start cutting. It's like in bodybuilding, you bulk and then you cut. That's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. So it's like you can't like not just you, but people in general. It's like you can't just accept like oh well. 
you know, because I don't naturally look like him without trying, then I don't have it. Everybody's got it because I'll tell you, like somebody like me, right? You know, I dated a girl and what she, what she used to tell me was that, oh, like she liked guys who are all muscled up and got beards, you know, bearded lumberjack muscle, muscle bound looking dudes. Right? right. And then like that used to make me feel like, oh, damn, like, you know, I don't look like that. You know what I'm saying? And then there were times I was like, damn, like, yo, I don't I don't look like that because I didn't have the mindset. Like, well, first of all, first of all, when it comes to, you know, gaining size and muscle and strength and all of that, everybody has the potential to do so however way you want to do it. You know what I'm saying? But obviously I, I do it naturally. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that that happens. You have to wake up and decide, all right, I want to see my body at its its aesthetic apex myself like you know what i'm saying like everybody can do it like we have one life and it's like you it's like who the hell wants to you know be on their deathbed and be like damn yo i've never seen myself like in 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 shape before like like i've never seen my peak physical condition i never reached my peak physical condition like who who wants you you should want to see that especially in your youth in your younger youth you should want to see. It's like Wiz Khalifa. Did Wiz Khalifa say, "Oh, I just, I'm just a skinny ass." And you know, Wiz Khalifa was skinny. I'm talking about like he didn't eat. He was just smoking weed for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and he wasn't even. You know what I'm saying? Right. And look at him now. Look at him now. That's why his he, GQ uh, thing. Yeah, he was working out, doing all that. And yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. So that that just goes to show a guy who literally turned his physique around. I was the same thing. I used to be Wiz Khalifa skinny. You know what I'm saying? Until I decided to do something about it because I was tired of seeing all other dudes, you know, looking all, you know what I'm saying, muscled up, stuff like that. And I did it. You know what I'm saying? And I did it for myself. I didn't do it because of, you know, my, you know, my girl. I did it because of me. So right. that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's like with women, if you like how you look, then, then it rock on. You know what I'm saying? Shake what your mother gave you. Right. But if you want to look better, you have to do something about it. And you have to make a commitment. And the results that you want to see, they don't come the next day. They don't come the next month. You might start to see a little bit in three months, but that's nothing in comparison to what you'll see if you commit one year. That's how it is. That's how it is. Right. So it's like it's like seeing these guys on television and then it's like, well, you want to look like them? Well, shit, get a gym membership, figure out your workout split, figure out your nutrition and get to it <laughs> and get right. to it. So that way it's like I can come up, I can come up out the shirt and I ain't gotta worry about nothing. Right. I ain't gotta worry about nothing because I put the work in. 